We're here at Kimry Park on a beautiful day. The birds are singing and we're talking softball because that's what happens here at Kimry Park with Nathan Neighbors, who is the Sport Recreation Operations Manager. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, thanks it, for having me. It's been a while since we've caught up. It has, it has, it um, has. So tell us what's going on right now. Well, right now we're um, in the middle of softball as we're you know in the middle of the year. Um, we've been going since um, March, or excuse me, since February on softball. And now we're at the point where we're five nights a week going Going adults, youth, seniors, you know, we have four year olds to 94 year olds out here going five nights a week. Um, like I said, we're in the middle of the run, so. That's amazing. Yeah. So, what's your biggest age group out here playing? Our what biggest, do you have the most of? Our biggest age group is actually our youth. Now, it's grown mm -hmm. from, uh, it's up, we're up to about 55 teams this year. Uh, it, it kind of jaunted around 48, and then at the end, we added seven more just to get more kids in. So, as you say, you know, you have four fields behind us and 55 teams and two and a half, you know, two months to do it in. That can be challenging because we try to keep the schedules to certain nights. And, you know, like I said, so we're, we've got them allocated to where, yeah, you're playing on this night, that night. So, that, mm -hmm. but that's our biggest age group, our youth. And that, that age group ranges from uh, four years old to 14 years old. That must be a lot of fun to watch. It is. It is. It, <laughs> it's a very loud environment because, you know, the youth, they bring mom, dad, grandpa, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. So the park is packed on, you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays with the, with the youth. Well, speaking of packed, how are you doing on parking with all those parking? people getting, getting into Kimry Park yeah, at the same time? At, well, we're standing at right here is actually the new annex parking, which has been a big savior because we haven't had any overflow parking issues as far as, you know, compromising safety or anything like that. So people were able to come up here, park, and uh, really have managed it to where, you know, we haven't had any issues. But on league nights especially, you get mom or dad. One gets off from work, the other goes and gets the kids. So you're, you're factoring in two cars per kid. That can cause a lot of um, overflow parking issues. But this right here alleviated all of that. Um, and I think we did this two years ago. So parking has been a non-issue, one less thing. That's fantastic. Well, we forget that in today's world, you're right, mom and dad are split up. There's multiple kids. They've mm -hmm. got different things going on, right. sometimes in the same evening. Mm -hmm. So there must be a lot of uh, jockeying in and out of there, parking there spaces is. here. It's, I mean, uh, my kids are actually playing this year, and it's kind of been, and I work here, and it's tough to make a 5.30 <laughs> start. So it'll be, I'll tell my wife, you get the kids, I'll, be, I'll meet y'all at the park, you know, which it should, you know, be the opposite. I should be there waiting, but that's life. That is life. So about what time does everything wind down finally here on a summer night at Kimry? Uh, like on a, on a typical night, 10.30 at night, it's kind of when, you know, lights, well, when we kind of game start finishing up. Um, we'll go through the summer months till, uh, till Labor Day, and then we'll start our fall season. So right now we've got church league going, um, and our men's industrial, a new co-ed industrial league going. So really the focus out here has been softball. Yes, and thank goodness you have this artificial turf that takes a beating with all those teams yes. coming in and out. Yeah. How's it holding up? It's holding up great. We had a, our annual inspection about uh, two months ago, and they were, you know, they were like, "Hey, you guys are where you need to be on it. Looks like it's getting minimal use, which is what we wanted here because we are taking care of it, um, and it's taking care of us because this year we had one rain out through the through the, you know, we had a very wet spring. So through that time, we were able to, you know. Many of you like the schedule where we had one one rain out. So one rain out, right. and it's not that long ago that people remember the flooded fields at Kimry. Yes, yes. You know they they kind of sat in a bowl here, and you know when it rained, it all ran to the infields. So mm -hmm. well, that turf looks beautiful today, as you can see. Right. That's right. that's just amazing. Okay, so looking ahead towards the fall, mm -hmm. how does the schedule change and the activities change? Basically, you know, we'll still stay stay softball oriented out here at Kimry. Uh, we'll go from a uh, five nights a week to four nights a week in the fall because football will take over Friday nights, and we don't do anything out here on Friday nights just because you have so many kids and parents and communities that you know they get behind football, their their schools and stuff like that, and they go to the events. So. On a, on a typical fall schedule, it's Monday through Friday, or excuse me, Monday through Thursday, and we'll have youth on Mondays, adults on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and you know, from about starting at six o'clock in the afternoon till about 10 o'clock in the evening. So about when should they be looking up for signups for the fall sports? Signups will start uh, the first week of August for the fall sports, and we like to let the kids get back to school for that, you know, just so they'll be back in school kind of the first or second week of August, we'll get them signups there the signups will end kind of the last week of um, August we'll get teams formed and all that and and then have them out there like the Monday or Tuesday after Labor Day 
that's pretty quick. Yep, it They'll is. Just it keep is jumping right in there. Right, it's a quick turnaround. They get about a month break uh, between seasons, and then we go. But I have a feeling you don't get a month break. No, no, that's part of it. It's just the you know the rotation, but it is variety, so it does kind of change things, and and it allows us to you know make changes for the next year. Um, on the fall season instead of waiting a year to make a change we can say hey this didn't quite work out how we wanted it to let's let's switch this and you know adapt it immediately so we're not sitting on something for six months waiting for the next you know season to come up to make the adjustment so in kind it's a good thing you know it is it is it can get a little tiring but and you know fatiguing but we're able to basically just implement it and go great what is your biggest challenge our biggest challenge obviously is um, you know facilities because our program has started to grow and it started to re it started to meet beyond expectations on numbers so to facilitate these needs of you know we have four fields behind us and those are the four predominant fields that are played on in the entire city you know that's what our city has for softball and uh, that's it there's that's it. nothing else nope. in, in that, the city of that, hot springs that, that is it that's you know our city facilities Kimry mm -hmm. park is it um so we've got to make sure that we've got games you know that, that the kids don't have big breaks and you know we're trying to be creative with schedules that they don't play one week and they're off two weeks so it's just a, a basically creating a constant flow out here to where there's you know consistent schedules because parents like to know hey we play every Monday night not we play Monday this week and we're off two weeks and we play this Tuesday we try to keep it very consistent but that also helps everybody you know kind of know what they're looking for out here so actually facilities is probably our biggest challenge just making sure the scheduling of the facilities is uh, get it, the, the dynamic is getting the biggest bang for buck. Well, what's the answer to the facilities problem looking ahead? Well, I mean, honestly, we just need more. I mean, you know, I, I don't, you know, have the, you know, the, the answer yet. But you don't I'm, have the magic wand. Right, right. But uh, I think I think it's on the horizon, hopefully, you know, that mm -hmm. something, you know, will come about that where we have, hey, you know, we see the need for, you know, more youth sports and, you know, we'll fill it. You know, it's kind of that saying, if you build it, they'll come. Right. I mean, Other communities meet that need and we're approaching that right. point right yep. now, aren't we? All right. And I think it's a good thing. You know, we, you know, some say we may be behind on that. I don't think that's the case. A lot of people in the mid nineties ballpark boom really bought in and overdid it. And now they're finding themselves with derelict parks because they're like, Hey, we, we, we had to pull the trigger so fast that they didn't actually do it correct. I think you know, the way, you know, the way our board operates and our admin, we're very thorough. We look at stuff and we, we, we like analysis. We like numbers. We like to say, hey, if we plug this in, what's our yield going to be? And we want to know exactly what it's going to be. And I think that collective approach will be the difference between what the city of Hot Springs does versus what other communities do. So I'm very excited about that approach. It's, it's hard to be, you know, it's kind of like uh, Christmas Eve. You know, you got to wait just a little bit, but it's worth it in the end. Mm -hmm. It's worth it in the end. So. So what I'm hearing is very intentional management of the resources that we have. When you look around Kimry Park, it's well maintained. Mm -hmm. People like to come here right. because it's clean. It's yeah. it's uh, you know it's beautifully maintained. Right. And th that's no easy task. Right. And that, and that's and you know one of your biggest maintenance things are the people. You know I mean yeah you have the grounds but maintaining the people because you have you know up to 1,200 people in a space like, on a given night. And we all have different sets of standards, and, and, and so you got to make sure we're all on the same page. And through media, like social media, texting, group text, emails, everybody, you know, we make sure all the parents get the rules. So that if they're going to, you know, have a question, they're going to know what they're having a question about. You know, so we try to give them as much literature as we possibly can, but, um, you know, but maintaining an atmosphere. That atmosphere is something you can't just roll out there and have it happen. It's something you have to grow, and it's a culture that turns into kind of what it is today. And that's that's the biggest compliment you can get is, hey, we came out to Kimry this year, first time to play, loved it. What a family atmosphere. And that's the one thing you want to hear because you know you're doing things right when moms and dads are ready ready for next year. And then you start getting that question, when's the next sign up? When mm -hmm. do we start again? So makes all the effort worthwhile doesn't absolutely. it absolutely and social media is your friend that's how you get a lot, right. most of your information right we do that in our email groups uh, when the parents sign up we collect their information and we put them in our database and that way we can say hey here's the rain out if there you know, is a rain out we don't have to use that one much thanks to the turf but or say hey pictures are, are you know two weeks from tonight give them plenty of info uh here here's a copy of the rules if they have any questions or inquiries say hey you know I didn't, you know, what, what's what's the clarification on this instance, and we can send that right to them. So, that social media and just you know electronic devices, we've turned that to make sure that's a good thing. Make sure that's a good thing and that it works for everyone. Yes, because it's fast and and it's mobile. Right. And today's families are not in one place anymore. That's right. 
That's right. Well, fantastic. It's been great to get an update on yeah. what's been happening at Kimberly Park. Apparently a lot if you're not out here on a regular basis. And if you aren't, you need to come out here and watch all the fun. Right. People right. are welcome to do so anytime if they're not even involved That's on right. a team, right? That's right. It's free. There's no, there's no, um, there's no, what we call it, gator admission. It's always free, you know, free to the public. So it's, you know. It's the greatest game on turf. So. It is the greatest game on turf right here in Hot Springs. So you bring the kids. There's plenty to play on, run around, and have fun in a safe atmosphere. Right. Thank you, Nathan. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. And next week we'll bring you more city news.